interesting thing. Um, but yes, my name's Nikhil Latouche. Um, I am at the end of my youth, technically, in this 25 bracket. Um, and I, yeah, I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of my journey to kind of fight, to struggle, to get into the arts bubble as a Black Caribbean child, um, as well as kind of where I'm at now with my own company. Um, so, yeah, my family are from Dominica, which is a tiny island in the Caribbean, not the Republic. Um, and frequently within like, our culture, we're really creative people as, you know, background wise. Um, but my very Caribbean dad was adamant, like math, science and English was what I'm doing, what I'm like, focused on. And in hindsight, I'm very, very grateful for that because it means I'm now in a position where I'm an English teacher and able to run my own arts company. But I think it gave me an apprehension towards the arts and a bit of a resistance towards taking the gamble. Um, to become freelance or to pursue the arts as a profession because with that became a hesitance towards financial gain or instant gratification which I think a stable job was meant to be kind of preached as more safe. Um, so for me it was kind of always something I did as an extra extracurricular choice. It was never something I was able to study but um, I think with that gamble, it meant that I acquired a confidence in myself to go for many more opportunities, kind of trust my own voice to apply for things or put my own ideas forward, which then meant when I became a tutor at 17, um, when I was then having to teach maths and English, my students kind of took a more creative approach to the syllabus. And I was then having to be the supplement to the more rigid structures that the schools were kind of providing us, what is the only way to kind of learn or the only way to kind of digest the syllabus. Um, and because of that, it then led me to then find different avenues to approach education and how we can kind of find ways to open up pedagogy a little bit. Um, and then when I decided to take English and art at degree level, I then realized within that space on our four years worth of course, there were only two brown people on the course, which then you know, led to many other things, which in London, I wasn't necessarily exposed to all the time because it's so diverse here. Um, that made me really focus in on my own culture and how important that side of perpetuating me as a female, as a black female, as a Caribbean female, within that structure that was very white spaces. Um, and then now I'm kind of in a space where I'm doing my PGC to become an English teacher. And within my training, I've actually realized how opening up pedagogy with the creative arts and the dance and poetry that I've been able to do over the years has actually allowed me to access the syllabus from a very different perspective. And a perspective that means that sometimes a child who maybe doesn't attain as high in you know, the one to nine system maybe gets a personal reward in their returns of how they see the arts or how they see themselves because of because the arts aren't necessarily number based it's not necessarily based on the numbers we score but a longer standing journey to kind of gain access to our own expression um, and that kind of meanders into your own success criteria to kind of get a number base um, so yeah within the teaching bubble I've kind of found a space and a balance between teaching dance my weekends are often like this weekend my company are on stage and debuting a piece that I've choreographed and I've literally just left school to come here to talk you know so you know it's it, it is a juggle and it is sometimes hard with timekeeping and stuff but um the gamble was worth it you know and I think to be able to have people along your journey as a child especially in school to tell you the gamble is up to you and it's your own path to kind of take and to have that support along the journey is quite a nice bubble to be in. So yeah, thank you.